I'm taking the power right out of the power supply, running it right to the track, and in that circuit I'm going to put a double pull, double throw switch. Remember we had that a while ago so I don't have to play around and just throw the switch to bring it back. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Something you shouldn't do. I'm being bad. My engine, I don't care. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is shut that down, get that board that I put down and lost. I'm going to put that in the middle. There's a whole article on my website that talks about this, how to do it and what you can use it for. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. That's full speed. And I don't know if you're going to be able to detect when I put one diode in, but let's see what happens. Did it slow down a little bit? A little more? A lot? Let's speed it back up. Speed it up a little bit, a little bit more, a lot. Could I use, instead of seven diodes, could I put 15? Yeah. Are diodes expensive? Nah. eBay, three amp diodes, 100 of them for a couple of bucks. What would you use this for? Well, if you need to get a voltage down, I first used this when I needed to run some one and a half volt bulbs for a project, but the only voltage I had was five. So I just put about six diodes and it worked like a champ. Now, will the diodes get hot? Yeah. I mean, that energy goes somewhere. There's no such thing as a free lunch. But if you have enough of those diodes, it'll dissipate. They're, they're pretty hardy. Here's another thing I used it for. A guy I was working with, I was working on his garden railroad, he didn't want to be playing with his speed control all the time, but he had a downhill, and the train was going too fast down the hill. We cut the rail at the top and the bottom. We inserted about 10 diodes in the cut rail. What happened when the train hit that section? The voltage dropped. When it passed over into the uncut track at the bottom, it picked up speed again. He automated his railroad, so it went slower downhill than uphill all kinds of projects that you can use that for. Okay, there's a picture of my little board, trainelectronics.com, blah, 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 there it is. There's a, a five-part article, but this is the one you want, diode speed control. Okay. Yes? On those wires I passed around? I took them off, threw them away. Yeah. You need green diodes, you can keep them. I didn't need green diodes. Okay, we have about 10 minutes. I work with a lot of different sensors. I have done workshops on a lot of different sensors. This is one of the coolest ones. And I've got sensor articles. Recently I had a need for a new type of sensor because of an HO module I was working on. Um, everybody knows what modular railroads are. They build a section. I have an eight foot section of module, two four footers, and it has a main line that goes right through the middle. There's the main line, and that connects to the other people's stuff. But it also has switchbacks. It has a second railroad that starts here, goes up to here, reverses, goes across the main line, goes up to here. This is the mountain. Switchbacks goes up to here, switchback goes up to here, and goes into a, a mine up here. All that's automated, but that's not important. The thing that's important is I didn't want to have too many collisions. Because when the main line has a train going down it, if my little mining car it happens to be on this crossover, bad things happen. So the first thing I did, you can see where the main line, I'm labeling things here. Mining, train, there's the trouble spot right there. First thing I did is I put a laser there and I put a laser there across the track with a sensor. So when a train came down the main line, the laser beam was broken, I had a photo transistor that said to my controller, here comes a train, if the mining train was about to hit the crossing it would stop it. Well I had some friends on the modular group that played games, they'd bring their train in, break the one beam, back their train up the whole way around the module and come in from the other end and we'd have a wreck. So, oh, I was irritated. But you know, boys will be boys. One of the guys is a PhD physicist that built nuclear reactors for years, so I don't wonder about our country when I see what he's doing now. Okay, so what I came up with was the idea of taking a laser beam and shooting it from here all the way down the main line to there. So no matter what they did, I'd know that there was a train there. And that's what I did. There's the laser beam. It was shot down there. And let me show you what I came up with. 
And with a little bit of luck, <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> Don't get old, you need glasses. How did you, how did you avoid having the, main, having the mine car stop right on the crossing? Uh, I have reed switches on either side of it so I know which way it's going. And it won't stop it if it's already past the first reed switch. It's, it's pretty smart. Okay, can you see the laser beam up here? There's a photo transistor here. There's a laser here. And you see what's happening? And you, you literally could have this 100 feet down. And the laser beam would work just fine. There's only one problem with this. It's ugly. When you've got a train on there, it lights it up like a Christmas tree. I didn't like that. So I'm going to skip a whole bunch of slides out here and explain what I did. Because there's a microcontroller here, like a pickaxe, and I can control when the laser beam is on or off, the first thing I said, well, you know, why don't I just check once a second? Turn the laser beam off, see if it's broken, turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. Well, that was worse, because it was blinking. And it's easier to find something blinking than something that's solid. And I started thinking to myself, well, what if I turn it on for just a quarter of a second? And it, it worked fine, but it was still very, very apparent. I started going through faster and faster blinks of the laser beam. And eventually, I got it down to about one one hundredth, one hundred thousandth of a second. And if I take this and if I push this little button, those of you that are watching the laser beam, did it just go off? No, it didn't. It's now pulsing at about one one hundred thousandth of a second pulses. It turns the beam on, it looks at the phototransistor, says yes or no, because if I take my hand, it still toggles it. Now, if we turned the lights off and went into a coal mine and, you know, you'd still be able to see it. It's still there. And if I take my eyeball and put it right on that laser, I can still tell there's something there. But I'll be darned if you can see this on my module. And I have the laser inside of a building at one end, and I have the detector, as it looks like a little signal head, sitting on the track at the other. Works very nicely. Kind of a neat one. This one I've not written up. I think I'm, this might wind up in a magazine at some point. Couldn't you have set a sensor switch as the, as the train approached the trouble intersection to turn the laser on and then set a uh, sensor switch to turn the laser off? As an probably button? could. Probably could. Uh, this one I think is more trouble, but more trouble free. This one, I only need one laser and one sensor. I don't have to put anything on the other trains. That's the other thing. I could have put reed switches on. There's all sorts of things you could do. This was just my solution and it worked pretty well. Okay, let's run through. That's all my notes about that. Blah, blah, blah. Yes? Uh, well, an infrared LED? No, it doesn't have the range. Yeah. Uh, there are infrared lasers, but not for three bucks. And by the way, those lasers are from Deal Extreme. Our buddies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's my, my notes on that. And that. Da, da, da. Okay. I did all that. And really, uh, there's an article also. Uh, I showed you how that the revolution can trigger that um, sound card we played around with. I also wrote an article uh, recently about using the revolution. It's right here, controlling a relay. So that if you've got a revolution in your uh, train and you wanted to power something that had a lot of current associated with it, you know, incandescent light or whatever, it's very easy to interface a relay with the revolution's auxiliary uh, outputs. That's that article there. Uh, there's also an article that many people have shown interest in about reverse loops and whys with something called a latching relay. That's here. Oh, this was kind of fun. Uh, somebody wanted a, a simple way to push a button and have a train go around a loop of track once and stop. It was a, a display they were doing for a hardware store or something. And that's a description of how to do that. It takes like two components. It's nothing to it. Animation. There's tons of animation other than our little guy that's still spinning over there. Oh yeah, I want to show you this. This is kind of neat. If you go to DaveBodner.com, that's my, web, my other web page, and you see this number at the top, that's the number of miles that I rode on my bike like three years ago. I was real proud of that, so I put it on. Nobody knows what it is unless I tell them. But if you click on that, and, and with a little bit of luck, let's see if my phone is working. This is actually my web page through my phone, which may work. I'm going to click on that. 
This has absolutely nothing to do with trains, but it's cool. See the cars moving? That's a webcam at home. My driveway, my front porch, my front yard. No. <laughs> now, the reason I bring this up is uh, there's a magazine called Make, M-A-K-E, that's published by O'Reilly. It comes out quarterly. Uh, I submitted an article about this to them, and they bought it, and they're going to publish it, I don't know, sometime this summer or next fall. But it shows you how to make a webcam for next to nothing. And in the summertime, one of these front porch ones is on a camera in the backyard so I can watch the trains. And you can do it from anywhere. I mean, I'm doing it from York, and there's my, my stuff at home. Okay. It helps. I do. Yeah, I, I watch it. And that way, if I'm sitting in the den, I, I shouldn't look at it all the time, but I do. You know, it's one of those deals. Okay, we got that. There's the webcam. Oh, yeah, this one's kind of neat. Did anybody figure out what this is doing? Uh, I'm a cyclist. I put LEDs in my helmet because I figure anything that I can do to keep those crazy people in cars from hitting me is good. This is essentially what I have wired into my helmet. This is doing the same thing as the little guy there. And by the way, this was the cover story in Nuts and Volts magazine in August uh, of this year, last year. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows what it's doing. It's telling you the temperature. I figure as long as I got lights blinking on my helmet, I might as well do something useful. If you wait until it blinks real fast, like now, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six, one, two, 62 degrees. <laughs> they don't know, but my buddies know. My buddies know, and they watch my helmet, and they can tell me what the temperature is. Coldest I rode this year was five degrees above, above zero. I have done, gone as far as seven below. Okay. And that's what the little guy there is doing. I have one of these in my backyard that runs 24-7, and I can see it from my easy chair in the den, and I can tell what the temperature is out in the garden. It drives my wife crazy. Why is that bright thing in our backyard? She should be sainted. Okay. Set it to run an eagle? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got that. Okay, and in closing, Really, it's more fun to make it yourself than to buy it ready to go. And I got nothing against the guys that are selling stuff. God bless them. But I'd much rather make stuff myself. It's more fun. And finally, Pablo Picasso said this. And boy, is that me. I don't know how to do half of this stuff when I get an idea. But isn't Google great? It knows everything. And there's a lot of resources out there. If you have an idea for something and you want to do it, and you're willing to get your hands dirty and to study a little bit, you can figure it out. OK, questions? None. Then thank you. Appreciate it.